So a few days ago, I got a leaflet in the post from uh, my Conservative Party MP, Pauline Latham, who has been the MP of my constituency for the entire time that constituency has existed. So the entirety of the current uh, Tory government, the last nine years, she has been my constituency's MP. And I got this leaflet through the post, and what I'd like to do is go through uh, the section on Brexit, and just let's just discuss which parts of it are true, which parts of it are inaccurate, and which parts are straight-up lies. So I could go through the whole thing, but most of it is, you know, tiny sections saying, oh, look, we've got a little bit more funding for that, or oh, we're going to get a bit more funding for this. Or, the, the Brexit party is the main part that's worth going through for the purposes of this. So I'll just read through it, and every time I come across something that is in some form wrong, I, I will stop and I will explain what is wrong with it, and we'll see how far we can get through this just before having to stop and point out that it's a lie. Okay, dokie. Only the Conservative Party can deliver Brexit and get it done. Well, that's a bad start already. It's The first sentence is a lie. Only the Conservative Party can deliver Brexit. No, that is that is wrong. Certainly the Conservative Party wants to deliver Brexit, but they are not the only party willing to do that. Um, the Well, the Brexit Party obviously want to, but that's a <laughs> bit of a non-starter there. But Labour are more than willing to deliver Brexit too, in a slightly different form to what the Conservatives are, are offering. But they are certainly not the only party. So, so, first sentence, already a lie. Okay, fantastic. So, only the Conservative Party can deliver Brexit and get it done. Even that's a lie. The Conservative Party will not get Brexit done. Their Boris Johnson's deal doesn't get Brexit done. It gets Brexit started. It is a withdrawal agreement that covers the first 12 months of our exit from the EU. Those 12 months will be spent negotiating the long-term trade deal, of which it is entirely possible we will end up then being in a situation where we have to choose again between extending this transition period or leaving the EU without any deal whatsoever. They're not going to get it done. That is a lie. It is wrong. I can't even get past the first flipping paragraph. It's a one-sentence paragraph, and I've had to stop twice. Jesus wept. Third time's a charm, though. Only the Conservative Party can deliver Brexit and get it done if we have a majority in the House of Commons after December the 12th. Again, that's not technically true, thinking about it. If they have a minority government, it's still possible to get their form of Brexit through with help from other parties. Obviously, if Brexit Party somehow manage to get uh, an MP, they will then support a uh, Tory minority. In the previous election, the DUP decided to help... Uh, the Tories, but that's not going to happen with the, uh, the coming. In fact, I'm thinking for it, even the Brexit Party might not support Boris Johnson's deal. They're already saying they don't like it. In fact, so you've got the two, two of the three biggest Brexit supporting parties, and two of them are saying we don't like Boris Johnson's deal. This is okay. Well, let's, let's let's get past this first sentence, shall we? I have always said we should leave with a deal, and we're lying again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The easiest way to know whether your electoral representative of the Tory party in your area, the easiest way to tell whether they support a deal or not is, are they still a member of the Tory party? Because if the answer is yes, that means they voted against the Ben Act, which was specifically designed to prevent the UK leaving the EU without a deal. It was an attempt to stop Boris Johnson blackmailing the Houses of Parliament with a no-deal scenario to force through his deal. So the fact that she's saying, I have always said we should leave with a deal, but has then acted against attempts to stop us leaving without a deal, means she doesn't care whether we leave with a deal or not. So, paragraph two, also a lie. I've always said we should leave with a deal, and now we have one. Not quite, we don't. It hasn't been agreed by Parliament yet. Already agreed by the European Union and ready to go. Well, that, okay, that bit's true. The EU have, have, have signed off and said, yeah, sure, whatever. Just do something, you stupid. Anyway. Moving on to the next paragraph. We live in a democracy. Yeah, that's true. I can't deny that one. And the people voted to leave the EU by a clear majority. And here we go. The lies are back. Now, this is not a lie that we voted with a majority. 
The disputing word here is clear majority. The majority was all of 2%. It was a 52-48, well, slightly less than 52, whatever. It was a 52-48 split. That 2% is not a clear majority. If you did that referendum the next day, it could have gone the other way. You're well within the error of tolerance there. But that is not the biggest problem with that referendum. That referendum was fueled by outright lies, misinformation, xenophobia, there was electoral fraud, there was data fraud. We had members of um, EU leave supporting parties um, stealing data from or selling data to each other without the permission of the people who that data belonged to, which is also a breach of uh, data protection laws. And let's not forget, the Russians are interfering, or did interfere with the referendum. I can't tell you to what degree they interfered, because Boris Johnson has got the report sat on his desk telling everyone how much the Russians interfered, and has refused to reveal it, because not revealing this report is less damaging to the Conservative Party than releasing it. So whatever you think is in this report, the worst case scenario is it is significantly worse than whatever you expect it to be. If it was completely harmless, he would have released it within the 10 days as was expected. The fact that he has held off on it means that uncertainty around it is less damaging than revealing what's in it. That is terrifying. But, oh, Jesus, well, we're getting off topic of it. Anyway, it is an insult to say that they did not know what they were doing. That's not... That's inaccurate as well, because the argument is not that people didn't know what they were doing when they voted uh, to leave the EU. The argument is that leaving, voting to leave the EU doesn't actually mean anything. At the time of voting, it didn't mean anything. It was four words. Leave the European Union. Leave the EU doesn't mean, it doesn't produce a mandate for anything specifically. The example I like to use as to what's wrong with that particular question is just put the actual question to the side for the moment and imagine that the referendum was held on a different uh, issue, a different question asked in the same way. So imagine the question was, should cannabis be illegal in the UK in all forms for all reasons? Yes or no? So you've got a very, very simple question, but your two answers do not necessarily produce a mandate depending on which way the result goes. If the answer is yes, you do have a very clear mandate. All forms of cannabis, all reasons, illegal, bam, problem solved. If the answer is no, all you've established is that the majority of the population want cannabis legalised in some form, but that doesn't actually mean anything. Any, there's no government that can look at that data and go, right, well, that definitely means we need to do this. It produces a range of answers which the government would have to select a particular avenue to try and pursue, but you'd have no guarantee that that would be the one that the majority, even of the people who voted to have some form of legalised cannabis, would want. So, for example, the ranges of answers you could get from a no response to that previous question is you could have medical cannabis, but only the oil is legalised. You could have any form of cannabis legal under medicinal use. You could have recreational cannabis legalised, but medical cannabis illegal for some reason. You could have all forms of cannabis legal for all reasons. You could have smoking cannabis as mandatory. You'd have to be smoking cannabis at all waking hours of the day. It would be nonsense to assume that's what people wanted, but it would technically cover the, the supposed mandate given by the referendum. It doesn't actually point to any single one of them and say, that is what you need to do. And if the result of said referendum has been 48-52, you would then have to try and prove that whatever individual aspect of that question you decide that whichever avenue you tried to go down you would have to prove that avenue was more popular than the 48 percent that voted in favor of illegal cannabis in all forms so it doesn't actually produce a mandate as i said you you'd then need to try and prove that 52 percent of the people were in favor or at least were willing to compromise on the issue you had selected now obviously with that particular question, you've got the entire situation backwards. What you would do is you would have you'd have a general election first to dictate which avenue people want to go down, and then you would hold that to a referendum if you decide a referendum was necessary at that point. We take that back to the EU, 
you have one very, very specific situation. Remain in the EU is defined by two international treaties and hundreds of our own laws. It is a defined quantity. Not completely intransmutable. It will obviously change over time as more laws are set by our country or by the EU. But one of those laws is that any major constitutional change would have to be agreed to by the UK in a referendum. That's one of our laws. So if the EU said, we want you to join the euro, as an example, or we want to have an EU army and we want you to join it, for example, it would have to go to our, to the UK. We would then have to have a referendum. It would then only become UK law if our referendum then said, yes, we accept those things. So anyone who's arguing that being in the EU means sticking with the euro or this EU army, but if they want an EU army, we can veto that. We don't, we don't have to have one if we don't want one. That's literally part of the deal of being in the EU. So, yeah, I said our own laws are there to protect us from these mystical demons that people seem to fear the EU doing. Anyway, the point is that in the referendum, remain in the EU was a singular defined quantity. Leave the EU was those words, leave the EU. Effectively, was looking at all of the things we currently have and saying... Not that. It's the equivalent of having one of those tick-the-box questionnaires and selecting the other option at the bottom of the page. It doesn't mean a specific thing. There's, it could mean the Norway arrangement. It could mean the Canada arrangement. It could mean no deal whatsoever. It could mean dismantling the UK in its entirety and joining North Korea because North Korea aren't in the EU. Again, a stupid, insane option that no one in their right mind would suggest but is technically covering leave the EU. So it's not that people didn't know what they were doing or didn't know what they wanted, it's they weren't actually voting for the thing they wanted, they were simply voting against the EU. So the onus is then on whichever avenue the government has decided to pursue to try and prove that that is the more popular option against the 48% approval rate the EU has, which simply doesn't exist. There, no form of Brexit has ever even implied that it would be more popular than remaining in the European Union. So let's move back to our little uh, leaflet over here. It is an insult to say they didn't know what they were doing. Most polls indicate that despite hundreds, if not thousands of hours of debate in Parliament, those who voted to leave would do exactly the same again. Oh dear, and we're back with the lies. Well, I don't know if there's a lie or just a falsehood. Because when I, th when I first read this, I assumed she was trying to be clever and had failed miserably. Uh, I was under the impression what she was trying to do is do that, um, that's like sort of play on words people do, where they present some, a true statement in such a form that it implies a reality that is different to the truth. So, for example, if I were to say, there are no living HIV viruses in Freddie Mercury's body, the, I'm trying to phrase something that's true. There is no living HIV virus in Freddie Mercury's body because he's dead and has been dead for a long time. But the way I've phrased it implies that he's been cured of HIV and is alive and well somewhere. That's a very weak example, but that's what I thought she was trying to do with this. It is also entirely possible that she's just a moron and doesn't realise what she's saying. Because the problem is, it is technically true that the majority of people who voted to leave would vote the same way if given that option. Unfortunately, the majority of the Leave voters is not the majority of the country. The majority of people who voted one way or the other uh, on the referendum would vote the same way. The problem is, as I said before, there was only a 2% margin of error on this. So the majority of the Leave voters could theoretically be only 51% of them. But that's a massive change in the overall dynamic of the result in overall. And it is true that the vast majority of people who voted whichever way in the referendum would vote the same way again. The problem is there are more people who voted leave who would now vote remain than there are remainers who would now vote leave. That difference is quite substantial when you look at the numbers. It also doesn't take into account that the majority of the people who voted to leave the EU were, let's say, of an older disposition. In other words, in the last three years, 
quite a lot of them have died of old age. And conversely, Remainers, statistically, the younger you are, the more likely you are to support Remain. So all those 16-year-olds who couldn't vote in the referendum, who have now got old enough to vote, they, majoritively, support Remain. So we've actually got a fresh influx of Remainers, and we've lost a lot of the Leavers just without anybody changing their minds. The fact is, the vast majority of polls, and it's not, you know, 51% of them, it's like 90% of them, since the referendum, have shown that the UK majoritively wants to stay in the EU. Which is why people who support Brexit don't want another referendum, because they know it won't go the same way as the last one. Even more so if there's a specific question on the table, because they know for a fact the majority of even Brexit voters don't like any form of Brexit. It's absurd. So either Bolling Latham is actively lying to you and trying to imply that people haven't changed their minds as a country since then, or literally doesn't understand how numbers work. Neither of those bode well for Miss Latham, do they? Right, let's just keep going. So rather than yet more dither and delay, let us get on with it and allow our country to move forward. Do you know what the quickest way to get the country to move forward is? To revoke Article 50, because then Brexit's gone and we can deal with actual problems, not just the ones that exist in Nigel Farage's head. Even if we take Boris Johnson's deal, it's just the start of Brexit, as I already covered. All it does is it puts us at the risk of no deal again, but this time without having the safety net of EU membership to fall back on. This whole get Brexit done is fundamentally wrong. Not only because, as I said, it doesn't get Brexit done, it gets it started, and get Brexit done seems to be taken second place to get Brexit done properly. If we have to leave the EU, which I don't think we should, if that wasn't abundantly clear so far, if we have to leave the EU, we have to make sure it's done correctly. To make sure we've done so in a way that damages the country the least, in the way that is acceptable to the majority of the country. And that just isn't the case with the Tory party. They're not interested in what the majority of the country want. If they wanted to make sure that the majority of the country supported their deal, if they had faith in their deal, they would let the people vote on that deal. They would not hide it in a general election where it is entirely possible for the Conservatives to get a majority of seats in Parliament on 30% of the vote. If only 30% of the country are willing to let the Tories do what they want, there is no basis for them to force their stupid form of Brexit on a country that doesn't want it. And yet, that is the way our system allows. Maybe not how it was designed, it's just a fatal flaw that is inherent to our first-past-the-post voting system. If we had a better voting system, if we had, let's say, single transferable vote, it, you know, it's possible that general election could resolve this, that people would then be able to have their votes transferred to their second or third choice in such a way that we found a viable compromise amongst all of this. But as it happens, the, let me put it this way, Boris Johnson has so little faith in his own deal, he didn't even want MPs looking at it before voting on it. He gave them three days to try and decide, that was his plan, three days to look at this fundamentally very, okay, admittedly very similar, but fundamentally different de uh, deal, withdrawal agreement he'd pulled out of his ass by just agreeing to whatever the EU said at the last minute, and he didn't want them to have any economic impact assessments on it, he didn't want them to have time to look through it properly, because it's hundreds of pages worth of documents. While they may know the general idea of which bits of it have changed, they still need to look through the fine wording. Because, let's face it, you can't trust the Tories to not tell you something of importance. So, yeah, they, you can tell by his actions he has no faith in this deal. Okay, so we're about halfway through this uh, this leaflet so far. Luckily, we should be able to get through the rest of it a bit quicker, because I've covered most of the points that I should come up again. So let's, let's move over here. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I would appeal to those who are going to back the Brexit party to vote Conservative to make sure our departure from the EU is completed. See, that, that makes perfect sense to me. It makes sense that if you were going to vote for a party whose leader was a racist bigot who lied to you and was funded by the Russians, you're looking at the same party there. Brexit, Conservative, they're the same thing. If that, if, Not that the Brexit party had anything else going for them. 
So, yeah, that's the Brexit, that's the, sorry, that's the Conservative Party message here. Racists welcome in the Conservative Party. You don't like brown people? You don't like Muslims? Come over here, we'll take your vote, come here. We, we like that over here. We, we play up Labour's anti-Semitism problem, but we don't care about our own. Okay. Meanwhile, Labour and the Lib Dems want to stretch out our membership of the EU even further. Now, see, that's a sentence. That is technically correct. Both Labour and the Lib Dems do want to extend our membership of the EU. In quite different ways, though. Labour want to extend our membership of the EU so that Brexit can be A, done properly, and B, put to the people so they can decide whether they actually want the sodding thing. Which we don't. We covered that before, but we don't want it anymore. Whereas the Liberal Democrats want to extend our membership of the EU by saying, Brexit is stupid, let's not do that anymore. Which, if they get a majority in Parliament, you know, they've got the same argument to do that as which Boris Johnson has for forcing his stupid deal through. Though, personally, I still think that whatever we do as the end result of Brexit needs to be put to a referendum. Leave, remain, you, you need to check that that is what the people want by asking them that specific question. So if by some weird turn of fate, the Liberal Democrats end up with a majority government, which I don't think is likely, but if that does happen, I would still argue they would need to put the result to a referendum, not just implement it straight away. But, you know, that's... The Liberal Democrats getting a majority government is about as much a unicorn as anything the Brexit Party promised, so... Uh, yeah, let's put, let's put that to the side. So, next, let's, next bit. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Brexit not being a thing we have to worry about anymore. Just going back to a European partner saying, sorry, we've been into just a stupid thing. Let's actually get on and make the world better. Actually looking at our own problems, you know, NHS, education, prison reform, electoral reform, let's get that first past the post system gone. Being able to look at those and actually solve them and not having to look turn to Trump and say, yes, Master Trump, you want the NHS? Here you go. What, you want my arm as well? You can have it. Can, 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 we, get, can we get a trade deal? Please, anything? Oh, oh you, want, you want us to have poisonous chicken? Uh, okay. I, I, yeah, okay, okay. Yes, Mr. Trump, sir. It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? Not having to worry about that. Not having to worry about the Scotland up and leaving. Because, well, they still might, even if we remain in the EU, given how much crap we've given them over the last nine years. But I, I believe that if we remain in the EU, the chances of Scotland having another referendum that results in Scotland leaving the UK, the odds of that reduce significantly. Part of the reason that they voted to remain the part in the UK in the first place was because of our EU membership. Okay, let's move back. Can you imagine that? Yet more confusing and endless wrangling. That is exactly what the Conservatives are promising, people. More confusion, more wrangling, more negotiations. Just doing so from a weaker position. Jesus wept. More confusion and endless wrangling while we have another referendum. Six months. That's Labour's commitment to this. Three months of renegotiations to try and get one that, you know, does tiny changes. Like, you know, protecting workers' rights. A thing that the majority of the country will benefit from. Three months to arrange a slightly different, less damaging form of Brexit, and then three months for the people to look at that and say yes or no to it. At the end of that, you have a mandate. The confusion is gone. Everyone knows what the future holds for the country. Even if there is more negotiations to do for the long-term arrangement, at least we know what that long-term arrangement is going to be and that the people are okay with it. It's six months, and the problem goes away. Unlike the previous extension that the Conservatives had to get, in which they did nothing for the majority of it. They gave us six months. They gave us six months from April to October. Their leader stepped down. He then, they then proceeded to have to elect a new one, which took months. Then as soon as he was elected, Parliament session broke up for summer. When it came back, he then proceeded to do nothing until the last... Like, two weeks? It was something like... It was some incredibly tiny time frame where he went back to the EU and said, I just need something that's not that previous one because I voted against that one. I got in the way of Brexit last time. So, can you just give me something different and I'll pretend it's better? Cheers. Thanks. Hey, look, guys, I've got a new one. You know that thing that I said we wouldn't do, that we wouldn't put a, a border in the Irish Sea, the thing I promised the Irish, the DUP, the people who support? Our yeah, sod that. We're doing that now. 
We're putting a, a border in the Irish Sea because my word is meaningless. Absolutely not. Anyway, so can you imagine that? Yet more confusion and endless wrangling while we have another referendum, which I'm confident would come up with the same result as the first one. That is wrong. That is, well, either, there's two options here, either she knows that that is a lie, or she legitimately believes that with no evidence to back it up. The vast majority of polls in the last three years have all shown the majority of the UK are in favour of remaining in the EU. There is no evidence to suggest it would go the other way. So while there are individual polls that come up that way, it is the minority of them. It's not even close. There's no reason to believe that statement at all. I believe that we need to be in charge of our affairs and the sooner the better. Well, it depends what she means by that particular statement. If she means in charge of affairs in terms of, you know, border control and making our own laws and all that other stuff, we can do that as part of the EU. If she just means we need to stop worrying about Brexit and get on with other things, the fastest way to do that is to revoke Article 50. What she is campaigning for and what she's saying in that sentence directly conflict. OK, luckily we're almost at the end. There's only one more paragraph. Give us the mandate. They're even admitting they don't have a mandate. Jesus. They know that they've got nothing to back this stupid deal on and they're admitting it. Give us the mandate and give business certainty and allow this conf- country to go confidently forward into a great future. That's also a lie. Absolutely every economic assessment has shown that Brexit will be bad for the country. And Boris Johnson's particular version of it will be worse than made. It's a harder form. The harder the form of Brexit, the worse it will be for the country. Every single economic assessment agrees with that. There may be differences in exactly how far they agree with that, but every single one agrees that the best thing to do for the country is to remain. <sighs> well, so yes, that is Pauline Latham's promise on Brexit. As you can see, it's majoritively nonsense. But at the very least, she didn't say anything really stupid, like the NHS is safe in Conservative hands and don't believe anyone else. You know, because Corbyn has produced, you know, documentation proving that the NHS is on the negotiating table with uh, the state. So, at least... Oh, dear.